New York getting famous. No. Uh -huh. I, I, just like, I don't like hearing my accent. <laughs> I've sent your video to about 25,000 people so far. Oh, wow. I don't know how many will actually open their email and watch it. But... <laughs> and we asked them all to give you one dollar. <laughs> ah, that would be great. <laughs> I won't have to work until I'm 67. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh dear. Um, thanks for doing this. I uh, I don't know if you've listened to any of our other podcast episodes, but it's going to be cool to to talk to somebody who's uh, who received our training because most of the people we've done the episodes with um uh, it's the first time talking to us um and this is going to feel just a little bit different but also i think when we talk about using restraints and that kind of stuff you'll be able to talk from the perspective of somebody who's been implementing our training already for a while and that's going to be cool um um before before <laughs> have we got time for me to share you share how i've started my year no, I oh. want you to do that during the podcast. Oh, oh do you? Okay. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I, I wanted to hear it. <laughs> Claudia, yeah. I, so, I thank yes you every day, no. every day. I start teaching. I go, thank you, Claudia. Thank you for this. Stop, <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop. Yeah. Don't, don't lose that excitement. Okay. I want you to have that. <laughs> I'm going to start the episode right away. The video is good. The audio is good. Claudia, you're recording on the cloud? I am. Okay. Welcome to the Happy Sensory Corner in Special Education Podcast. We're going to um, talk today to Anna Gonzalez and Debbie Kaur, who are, Anna, you're a classroom teacher, and Debbie, you're a special education teacher, and you both work at the Emmanuel Junior School in Brisbane, Australia. So to start with, ladies, uh, tell us a little bit about what inspired you to get into education and special education. What's your why? Who wants to start? You go, Debbie. Okay, <laughs> well, I, I wasn't seeking out um, as such a career in, in learning support, um, but I was, I guess I was thrown into the position and I, I took it on. Um, that was 11 years ago, and I honestly haven't looked back. I can honestly say I, I love being in this position. Um, I guess I had some experience working for family and children's services or, or many years ago in my career, um, working with disadvantaged children. And I guess everything came together, my experiences um, from my 20-plus um, teaching years. And so, yeah, so I guess my why is um, I, every child who walks through my door every week on a weekly basis, my why is I want them to experience success. I teach children who have learning difficulties, who find learning really, really hard. And so for them to walk into my room, to have fun, to feel safe, to feel loved, and to feel that they can do this, that is why I do what I do every day. I'm a little bit similar. I was a parent and I was doing my degree as a mature age student in Australia to become a teacher. So I applied for a, a teacher assistant job at the school my children um attended and instead of getting that position they asked me to do the role of um, teacher assistant in learning support um, because I had my uh, one year of university so I said yes and I started learning so much and working one-on-one -on -one with small groups and then after I finished my teacher degree I thought I'm not ready for the classroom uh, I want to be able to support these little ones if I can support them everybody else will be taken care of. So then I did my master's and then I started working here um, as a classroom teacher and just loved it because if I could help them, the, the, the rest of the class was easy and um, they had access to all these uh, additional strategies in the classroom context, yes. That's lovely. And so 
when we talk about reducing restraints, <laughs> you know, it's a big deal for many special educators with a lot of negative baggage. What can you tell us and uh, other special education directors who are listening? What can you tell us and them about policies, programs, techniques you're doing about that in your in your school? Not to be afraid to try new things. I mm. think um, for us, it's it's all about. It doesn't matter if it doesn't work, but at least you give it give it a go. And what doesn't work with one child works with the other. But it is so important that we support these little ones. Um, and the benefits is not just for that student; it's for so many more than that. It's for everyone and their families. It's not just them that we're supporting, but uh, actually the community. What? We have um, implemented a lot of brain gym, um, Anna and I, and we would start our morning with brain gym. And if I had, if I took Anna's children in the morning, I could tell if they had started their day with the program or not. I would ask them, but just because their focus and their ability to sit still, even um, and to participate in my activities. Um, it was so evident if she had done brain gym or not. Yes. Yeah, so and so did have... that impact the number of uh, meltdowns? Yes. It, yeah, I think so. But I think um, having now done mendability, mm. we have seen more success in the mendability strategies than we did with, with brain gym. Certainly brain gym, we, we do both. Mm -hmm. um, but mendability, we feel, um, has a greater impact on children. Mm -hmm. It's like it's taken the strategies to a next level. That's how we feel. And, and, and did you see, also see that uh, the number of meltdowns has decreased or uh, the, the results, the impact? Yeah. What was it before? What, what, what is it like now? In my classroom context last year, there were so many... I had a lot of students who f would find it hard to regulate just on a daily basis, just on little things, just not getting the colour they wanted. And and that would cause a meltdown. S simple things. There were bigger things, but simple things. And the mendability reduced all those meltdowns to such a significant level that, well, for me, comparing to the before and after, that it allowed us to learn um, yeah. the children were just calmer and, yeah. and also me. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. calmer. We were able to enjoy the learning environment so much more. And for me, I, um, I support children who have diagnosis. So I do many, many meltdowns in my week. Um, and so I would... Um, either withdraw the children and take them to my quieter environment if I could, um, or I would run after them if they were running, if they were doing fight or flight. So whatever that looks like, I'm on call for the meltdowns. What I have noticed since doing mendability is um, often when children are in that space, they're unable to communicate to me uh, their needs at that that time um, because of their space. What mendability has allowed me to do is they can communicate to me exactly what they need. I had a little girl that I was working with for a whole year. Every morning she would, almost every morning she would melt down and she was a runner. Um, and once I started the mendability, she could finally tell me what it was that was troubling her so mm -hmm. much at school. And it was a culmination of very small things that I could put into place in the classroom for her. And she hasn't had a meltdown since. Mm -hmm. So what I found is that mendability has prevented so many major meltdowns. Uh, Wonderful. On my list, um, so I, I have a list of questions to guide me through the process for, for the podcast. And my next question was, what is, um, can you give us an example of a program that has made a, a big difference? And what is the program that has the make, made the biggest difference 
And I feel like you're about to toot my horn, but I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> my answer to that question would be without a doubt, having taught for 35 years in a classroom teach as a classroom teacher and 11 years in a learning support role, um, mendability would be my number one choice mm. <laughs> of programs, without a doubt. Yeah. Thanks, Debbie. Uh, yeah. uh, so if if we switch directions just a little bit um, from, from our usual podcast format, what would you tell special ed directors who are listening to this? Is there something that you wish you had done early on in the program uh, you know, maybe some mistakes or some obstacles that they should probably address right away when they try to introduce mendability or what was the, did you have some hiccups on the way that maybe we, the other ones that are going to join in later on can avoid? I think, um, initially everybody's, um, the curriculum is so busy and your whole day, um, it is just full on as all teachers experience today. Mm. Um, so initially we thought this is going to take away from our teaching time and, and mm. time. Mm. And so we thought, how are we going to establish our mendability minutes? How is that going to look? Um, and so I guess you just keep trying to see what works for you and for your children. Mm. So I think what works for me um, I have the added advantage of only having small groups or one-on-one. -on -one. So um, before they even walk into my classroom, I have um, classical music playing with the paintings on yeah. my computer and they're going. The lights are dimmed and I have um, the fidget toys of differing textures all ready to go. So as soon as they walk in, um, they know, they sit on the carpet, they start watching. And even twice, twice this week, two of my children said, this is my favourite time oh. of the week. They said, this, Mrs. Core, I just love doing this. And I asked them why, and I said, why is this your favourite time? And they said, they call the claw um, when we do the claw on the back, they call it the they all the, they call it the back scratch, and yeah. they say you give the best back scratches. When you scratch my back, you make me feel so relaxed. It is so relaxing in your room, and we're talking year one children, six years old, mm -hmm. and my my most boisterous, active boys who I can say honestly loathe loathe learning of any description. Um, they come in and and I was telling Anna just last week, they're really talkative too and they just talk, 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 talk about it. They talk away, talk away, talk away, talk away. And as soon as I start the mendability minute and then go into the claw, there's silence. But you can tell from their head to their toes you can tell the change in their demeanour, mm. in their physical appearance, but also in their well-being. It is so quick, the change. And so it takes them from a really heightened state within a really within a minute to calm, relaxing ability to change that mindset to be able to then go from that calm sense to then their learning. Mm -hmm. So I think what I, I did question in the beginning is this is going to take up too much of my time because I only have a 50-minute period each week with these children. So every minute counts for me. But what I can honestly say is even if it took, and it doesn't, but even if it took 10 minutes of my lesson, what I then am able to achieve with the children is is far better yeah. and more successful than if I did not start with mendability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anna, did you also have that concern that maybe it was going to take away from teaching time? Um, for me, it was just, how, how do I do this? I was 
concerned about am I doing it right? Um, um, is this going to work? Um, uh, the time as well, but I, I was already I already had a lot of things to break my lesson up and to try to bring the children to um, a good brain learning space or mm. you know, to to readjust the brain. But this does that in 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 so quickly. So um, y- yes, time was one thing, but also for me it was insecurity. It, is this you know? Am I doing it correctly, or will it really work? Um, How did you uh, get into a, a, a sense of security? How how was is it something that we did that was able to address that, or did you address that on your own with something else? Well, the course helped. Talking to you helped because you you encouraged us and you said, you know, it's, it's this simple because <laughs> some techniques are really hard and you have to prepare and you have to have this and, and, and you have to spend the time one-on-one with a student. I have a classroom of 24, 25 children. I don't have all this time in my day to spend the time one-on-one. Okay. So I need to, although I do a lot of that, it's, 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 it's time, you know, it's it, what time really was the same concern in that context. But doing it, like the other day, one of my students, you know, they're all new. They've only done 10 days of school, okay? So he was having troubles detaching from mum. He was crying, crying, sobbing. He was sobbing. He had already been sobbing with mum at the door for at least seven minutes, let's say. So then I set all the children on the mat. Uh, Everything was going on because it was the morning, the music, the smell, the lights. So I went and I gently brought him and I sat him on my chair and spray a little strawberry above him and I didn't have eyes but I had an ice block <laughs> so I went to the freezer got half an ice block and gave it to him to hold and to have to eat so then he had the strawberry and the cold mm-hmm. it wasn't like the change I mean this child was sobbing it wasn't even a minute. I was just observing from, like, because then I left him. I said, just stay here until you feel better. I'll be back. And I went to look after the other 23 who were on the mat. They changed. Like, I, it was, I, I was actually, it was unbelievable. It happened so quickly. And I said, when you feel better, just come and join us. So I was, it just, so, well, you, I was, so time is a concern, or oh, if this is going to work, mm-hmm. experiencing it and, and seeing how it was working was so encouraging. Um, I, I mean, it's not the same for every child that it can be that quick, but it, it's this ch- child was in a complete meltdown. How did that happen so quickly? <laughs> uh, so success then encourages you to mm-hmm. continue to apply the techniques and the so things that you we... can easily do. We gave all of you this, you know, six hours of video online training course. Um, how did you feel after that? And uh, and I know one of the things we learned a couple of years ago from, from uh, uh, teaching more and more schools is that it's very important to then have those follow-up sessions and to talk one-on-one and, and help you absorb the material. You talk about a level of confidence that had to grow from am I doing this right to I am doing this right. How long did it take? How many sessions with us? Um, can you describe the, the evolution of your level of confidence from the time you started the online course to, to today? And the steps that were taken and the interventions? So me, the course, like I really... Because I have a master's and I love learning, so I'm always studying, looking for new things. It, I loved it because it was very informative and it was um, uh, science-based. So that was a plus. But then it was just brain knowledge. Having the sessions really helped me apply what I had learned. They were really beneficial. By the time we had our third sessions, we got, I felt confident. Um that uh, and we were learning more as we had um like we wanted to go more into literacy how we could help them specifically with those literacy C activities and we are applying them now with a new cohort so yeah. the confidence grew significantly uh, after the course and then i mean, I mean after the mm. sessions 
Right. So the yeah, course was like, opinion. okay, here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm not sure I'll be able to do all of this. Mm -hmm. And then the follow-up session was, so what were the onboarding when Claudia and I kind of walked you through, okay, what did you learn in the course? Tell us about your kids. Um, how did you apply with this kid, with this kid, with this kid? And you're saying that that is, that was a significant milestone. So if you yeah. were to advise the special ed directors who are listening to this and thinking, oh, maybe I should try this mentability training thing. Um, what advice would you give them? Do the course. <laughs> with the sessions. With the sessions. <laughs> the sessions, because with the sessions, we can ask you and Claudia specifics. Yeah. Is this right? How can I do it better? Um, what about this particular student? How can I help them? Um, and then I guess that that started at how can we help our children who get stuck on learning some sounds, particular sounds? How can we do that? And so it just, I guess, the, the more we meet in those sessions, more and more come out and, um, of what we want to learn, what we're stuck in, I guess. Yeah, we have one last session, don't we? Uh, yeah. And, and we keep, I mean... I keep bringing up new ideas for the session, but I think Anna says, no, nope, we're going to do literacy, right? <laughs> it's because in the early years, literacy is so big. Mm. That is, and it's the hardest thing for them. Like writing, mm. just the ability to learn to it's just huge. So that's why I think for mm. most of us is the biggest area of concern and how we help them. But if you have some ideas you would like to share with us, like we would love to hear that too. There, there's plenty. I mean, we, I feel like we've, it's funny. I say we only scratched the surface in terms of the training that we imparted and the, the protocols that we shared with you. There's a library of 500 different protocols. And you saw in the course, there's 20 different categories. And depending on which brain function we're trying to work on, really the next level would be to have a custom program yes. uh, where every two weeks you change and you evolve. So a sort of a progressive approach where we take the kids where they're at and we gradually build more and more of their brains. Um, that's more intense though, because now you have to start to track data and report and fill in questionnaires. Um, so we, we don't want to throw it anybody at the deep end until they're they're ready, but that would be the next level. But don't worry, our final session, we will make sure that Claudia will have a couple of good protocols for literacy. Uh, and, and, and this is a good segue for my next question for this podcast and is, what do you feel now that we've, uh, I'm getting the sense that behavior regulation is under control. So what would you say is the biggest need now for your uh, school? I mean, I guess you said literacy, didn't you? In an early years context, yes, yes. Yeah. Engagement. I, yeah, engagement. Mm -hmm. I guess um, what, what mentability has really shown me is in the modern world that we live in, children operate on a real, in really fast-paced, that is their life. Children just mm -hmm. race through life and they're not still for very long. Um, and so mendability helps them to sit mm. and to relax their bodies. But also within that, it's to get their minds ready for learning and that they can learn and that they will succeed. Um, so I guess to transfer um, what we're doing into all areas of school life would be the next thing and that would be educating more staff encouraging more staff to do the course um mm. i um because our preps have only just started they've only been at school for 10 days i have been going into the prep classrooms and supporting teachers and so i never leave without strawberry in my pockets <laughs> i have strawberry everywhere um so I went into the classroom and I was supporting the teacher and it was the first week of school and this little boy was heightened and he was melting down and he put himself in a corner of the room while the rest of the class were having mat time and he wouldn't sit down. Um, so I just got out the strawberry 
and I just gave it to him to smell and I said, oh, can you just tell me what this smells like? And he looked up and so he, he put himself in the corner and he his face inwards, he was facing oh. inwards to the corner, um, away from the teacher and the other students and I just said, um, would you like to smell this for me? And he smelt it and he looked at me and he said, this is really nice. Oh. I said, what does it smell like? And he took another smell and... I said, what do you think it is? And he said, I think it's strawberry. And I said, I think you might be right. And in two seconds, and I said, have another smell, and then we can come back and sit on the carpet and join the, the other children. And in two seconds, he had he had just de-escalated. He turned around and he sat back down on the mat. And mm. I said, great job. You know, so and so that teacher said, I want to do that. <laughs> yeah. She said, tell me how you do that, yeah. you know, because it was so quick. We have a webinar uh, tomorrow and on Friday. Maybe she can attend and watch it live. Yeah. You can, of course, explain it to her, but I think there's something that happens when you sit down in 20 minutes, you kind of pay attention and listen and learn. Some of us are joining because one yes. of our teachers next door that who did the course, she's been promoting it everywhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do this for it. You have to do it. So, yeah. um, but it's just and my team now. So it's a team of nine people. They all want to learn it. So two of us did. And we do, we do those group lessons um, everywhere. If you have a team somewhere else at the college that wants to get together, we can do it. Uh, you just just get them together now. You know, Claudia and I will come in and we'll spend half an hour with your team explaining you know, just to them. And they might be able to ask about their own students. And what about this student? And what about this student? What about headaches? And what about kids who don't, you know, whatever. Yeah, We can do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And and we also do it for the mendability minute because uh, I feel it's so easy to train for it. It's so easy to implement and the results are so powerful. Yes. When you think of all the training that's in the course that you did, the six hours, if you had to pick out two lessons and chuck the rest, you'd probably keep the meltdowns and the mentability minute, wouldn't you? And the claw. The claw. And the claw. Yeah. Ah, yes. 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 That, that one, I think it's Claudia's yes. favorite. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Speaking of which, Claudia, do you have Sorry. any training you want to impart today? I, I feel like it's a bit different because it's not yeah. like they've... Usually the, the special ed director will say, oh, we got these problems and this problem, and this problem. And Claudia will say, ha, 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 don't worry. I've got <laughs> something for you. But today it, we've already done this. We've done, we've trained you and we've I onboarded already know. you. I but do you a... have something? Yes, I do. Ah, oh, ha, ha, ha. I have something for you. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, I have two things. Two things that I can share with all the other people who are going to listen to the podcast and don't know. But the first thing is for you, because uh, your comment uh, is not, the content is not in the course as specifically as your question or comment, like, how is it possible it works so fast? So the research has been done and is published on PubMed. People can go and look for it. It was found that when you smell, so what they did, they did a swab of the cortisol, of the saliva of people who were very anxious before going into the MRI. And honestly, everybody's anxious before getting in this big washing machine thing. And uh, so they analyzed the level of cortisol uh, that was quite high in the saliva. And it's a test that is so easy to do. I'm dreaming about a study that we can do someday. So just... Uh, they checked it. It was extremely high. And then in the machine, they puffed a little bit of scent, just like you do when you say you spray the uh, strawberry that just comes into the air around the child. So they did that. They had a little puff of a scent. And right away, like by the time they walked and took another swab of the saliva, and the cortisol level was almost zero. What wow. what is that, right? It's magical. It costs so almost nothing, and it is physiologically explainable. 
our brain, like cortisol is our defense, right? And in particular, the children at the start of the day, they come with a luggage of hurry up, put your shoes, let's buy and and first days of school. So they come with a very high level of cortisol. They cannot help and be having the sobbing and the meltdown, and maybe they can hold it for a while, but it's going to happen at some point, or at least they can't learn, um, or that little boy who was hiding, too much is too much. Mm -hmm. So physiologically, there is an explanation for the status of those children, and now we know that providing a scent drops the cortisol level entirely. So that's why it's working so fast. So uh, Anna, you meant uh, like uh, there needs to be a real meltdown when you spoke about this little boy who had, had a real cause, like he, mom wa was gone. And um, so the meltdown that sometimes kids sort of make happen to get something. So the, the protocol don't work because they don't have a high level of cortisol. They are completely mastering the situation. But the children you talk about are in a level of biochemistry that puts them in inability to learn, inability to enjoy, to even like their own body because it's painful to be at that level of cortisol. The headache, the joint pain, like it's terrible. So they don't know, of course, but same concept with the clock the claw instantly increases the, the production of serotonin in the brain, which has been depleted by the stress. Mm -hmm. So it's a reality of a physiological um, happenings in the body that you are doing that. And the second thing I wanted to share uh, is because when we speak with people who have no idea what mandibility is, who heard about enrichment, but they think about getting a room that's very expensive and uh, very high equipment. No, it just takes an aroma and a hand. And typically teachers come to school with two. <laughs> <laughs> and they're free. They're just there, yeah. right? So implementing sensory enrichment, which will transform the children, uh, costs mm, almost nothing. It costs training because education has a value and people are even better for themselves. But I want also to comment on one thing, which is also something that happens around the world in schools who deal with children who have difficulties, is the turnaround and the turnout. <laughs> the people just cannot do it anymore because they don't know how to handle a meltdown. They come, they got trained to teach, and they come in a classroom and they cannot teach. And sometimes they get hurt a little bit. So that too, hopefully, is changing in your beautiful school. Like teachers will love more and more being there. Also because they get the smell and the music and the art. So your brain, ladies, <laughs> is getting better every day uh, just because just because you're there doing it. And uh, I wish we every school was doing it. That's why we are uh, doing our best sharing and we're doing podcasts and uh, I'm traveling to Australia. Yippity. <laughs> that I made it in a shortcut so that Kim can remove it from the video. So, <laughs> but yes, sharing is the most important thing. And uh, I, I'm just more than happy talking to you, listening to what you're saying. All these children who are no longer miserable. That's really why we're doing this, why I could not let Kim go, but he would not have gone uh, after all this time. That's what, why we're here, to have more children happy. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for your work. No, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, for us. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'll try anything that works. That I think that's my motto <laughs> when it comes to teaching. If it works, I'll give it a go. Um, but this has phenomenal results. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And as you said, it, it's not hard to implement. It's, it's quick and you just use everyday items that you already have. 
Um, so the setup is not time consuming. Mm -hmm. The planning for it is not time consuming. You can you just immediately can step into that space, particularly in a meltdown. You just you just know what to do, and mm -hmm. off you go, um, and you. Mm. Yeah, blessed are those children. <laughs> 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 thank you ladies thank you for your time uh thank you in behalf of all the special ed directors who are listening uh and have uh have a good rest of your day thank you thank Kim. you, you Claudie. you're welcome well it was always a pleasure